Hi, welcome to our presentation. We are going to be speaking about the chemistry of chocolate. My name is Lena Van Duzer. I am Brett Slowinski. Hi, I'm Carly Lundberg. And I'm Kyle Shaw. All right, so before we talk about chocolate in detail, first what we want to do is define our subject matter at hand of what chocolate actually is. And so we have a few questions that we can ask in order to narrow down the subject matter. And those questions are first, you know, what shape does it take? Can it be rectangular? Can it be round spherical? Or can it have like any other unique shape, such as uh, being a heart or a Hershey's kiss? Um, does it have any specific texture? Can it be smooth? Can it be crunchy like a Nestle Crunch bar? Or can it be chewy like a Milky Way? Are there any specific ingredients involved uh, in making chocolate? Uh, can peanuts be used? Or can, when discussing fruits, can fruits also be considered uh, a type of chocolate if they're covered in chocolate? And also we can ask, are there multiple types of chocolate? Is there a difference between white chocolate, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate? And uh, I guess the final question we can ask is, uh, can chocolate be all of these things? And I guess the answer to that question is uh, yes. Uh, when we're thinking of chocolate, we can you, we usually think that maybe one or multiple of these things can be applicable to the definition of what chocolate is. And so it's kind of funny that when we try to narrow it down, we just showcased how much variety of chocolate or what can be considered chocolate. And so for the sake of this presentation, we're gonna to try to narrow our focus down to Hershey milk chocolate and discuss all of its chemical components and the process of making it. So the basic ingredients from Hershey's milk chocolate are cane sugar, milk, cocoa, milk fat, lectin, and other natural flavors. And the main three are milk, cocoa, and cane sugar. So milk will incorporate all the other ingredients and gives chocolate the smooth texture that everybody loves. Um, cocoa is what makes the chocolate taste like chocolate and it gives it the richness and it's what makes it feel like an actual chocolate bar. And cane sugar is what gives the chocolate bar the sweetness and is the addictive feature because without anything to supplement the chocolate, then you would only taste bitter cocoa like in cocoa powder from baking. Onto the chemical components of chocolate, um, there's a lot, over 300 different chemicals, in fact, uh, with caffeine being, I guess, one of the well known proper or one of the well known uh, chemicals, though it's used in very small amounts. And similar to caffeine is uh, theobromine, which is uh, slightly higher in amounts uh, or present in amounts of caffeine, but it has a nearly identical structure to caffeine as shown with the diagram on the right. However, the main difference between the two is the use of a methyl group, which is CH3, which can be seen in caffeine, but not in theobromine. Uh, besides these two chemicals, there's also anatomide, which uh, blocks pain and depression and is naturally produced by our brains. Um, however, when it is used in chocolate, um, or it usually it is broken down very quickly. However, chocolate kind of prolongs this process, making these uh, uh, pain, or making pain and depression uh, be pro are repressed for longer periods of time. And finally, uh, phenylethylamine, it stimulates alertness and mimics the brain of a person in love, which also adds to its uh, sought out features and makes chocolate uh, desirable by other people. Um, like everything in the world, chocolate has its own physical and chemical properties. Uh, physical properties can be defined as properties that are measurable that also define its physical state while chemical properties are characteristics of a certain substance that are evident through a chemical reaction. So some examples of physical properties of Hershey's milk chocolate is the color obviously being brown, density being 0 0.641 grams per centimeter cubed, and it is also insoluble in water. Um, for chemical properties to find reactivity, it's easier to break it down into its smaller components. So like stated in the last slide, theobromine is one of those small components and theobromine is also sensitive to light and forms salts when combined with weak bases because it has properties of a weak acid. Um, chocolate is also chemically stable and combustible. The typical phase forms that we find chocolate in are solid or liquid, and depending on what you put into them or what temperature they're held at, they can be either of these. 
its melting point is 86 or anywhere between 86 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is why when it's held in your palm or your hand, it typically melts or if it melts in your mouth, um, because your body temperature is around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and which led to the m and slogan of melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Now let's take a closer look into the manufacturing process of um, creating chocolate. Uh, so first, after the cocoa beans are harvested, it is fermented, which I will be discussing in the next slide, and then dried. After this, the cocoa beans are cleaned and roasted, and then they undergo winnowing, uh, which is a process that separates the cocoa nibs, the part of the pod that we actually eat, from the shell and the pulp. Um, next, uh, the cocoa nibs are ground and pressed into um, cocoa chocolate liquor. Uh, from this point, um, you can take that liquor in two different directions. Um, we can either uh, press the, li uh, the liquor to extract cocoa butter um, and then grind it further to make cocoa powder. And then second, we can um, keep the liquor as a liquid and mix it with cocoa butter, milk, sugar, additional flavor, etc. cetera, uh, to be then tempered. Uh, the tempering process is where the chocolate is cooled at different uh, temperatures to produce the many properties uh, it has, such as being able to break apart from a bar. Uh, the tempered chocolate can then be molded into bars or other forms, or we can choose to keep it as a liquid and use it in the enrobing process um, to coat products such as fruits and other candies. Uh, now to discuss uh, more in detail about the chemical process of fermentation. Uh, which is an essential part of the flavor development of chocolate and it helps determine its final acidity. Uh, fermentation occurs under high heat and humidity and consists of two main phases. In the first phase, the anaerobic phase, yeast and bacteria break down compounds in the pulp of the cocoa pod. Uh, the yeast breaks down uh, the sugars to produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. Uh, the bacteria break down carbs, sugars, and citric acid to produce primarily lactic acid, which increases the overall pH of the solution. In the second phase, the aerobic phase, um, the more bacteria oxidize the ethanol and acids to produce acetic acid, which is then broken down into carbon dioxide and oxygen. The breakdown of ethanol is an example of an exothermic reaction, and therefore heat is produced. Overall, these, um, these several reactions break down some of the acid in the cocoa beans, allowing them to develop uh, the sweeter taste chocolate is known for. Here's the list of our sources we used for our presentation. We hope you enjoyed and thank you for listening.